everyone, John Doyle from Optics EQ. Today, I'm going to handicap a race at Belmont Race 9 on June the 1st. It's a turf race. And what I want to do is use Optics Grid and Optics Notes to do some form cycle handicapping and see if we can pick some horses that uh, look like they may be flying a little bit under the radar. So what is form cycle handicapping? Essentially is we're projecting to figure out using our tools, project which horses we think are gonna improve and which horses are gonna regress and what does that mean? So if a horse improves, is he still fast enough and good enough to win? And is he suited for today's conditions? Uh, and if he's gonna regress, you know, how's that affect his overall competitiveness, okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to look at this race, and it's the main special weight. And when I'm handicapping these races, boy, I, I really do rely on notes because it just gives me ideas about where these horses might be headed in terms of form cycle. You're looking, when you buy optics plot, you get the grid, and it looks like this. And when you buy notes, it gets turned on, and it looks like this. Woo! Woo! Thank you. So uh, I'm going to handicap this race using that. I'm going to start with the favorite because he's a big short price, uh, four to five on the morning line. And he may get played like this, but I think there's a horse we can take a chance against. And just simply for the reason, like you look at his first two races, he's kind of been slow out of the gate, nine and 11. He makes like a, a, a big close. Um, but I think his closes have been a little dressed up. Uh, like you can see in last race, we have this other comment. It said, the pace slowing late, but still made up a lot of ground. So the pace was slowing, and he had a poor start. You know, this is a horse that I'm a little concerned about betting, you know, a lot of money on it, you know, taking a lot of money. Because he just kind of, at least in his first two races, left a lot to be desired. So I don't know how much upside this horse has either. Around 80, 82. Uh, and when you like just compare, I mean, we got these brisk numbers all the way back. When you start looking at his late pace, it's really not that uh, strong. And if you look at the plot from a square perspective, uh, there's some horses that have better late pace. So if he's got to rely on late pace, uh, then he's going to be a little bit in trouble too. So I, I just think a horse that, especially at that price, worth taking a chance against. And maybe you play into a late pick four, pick, pick five where you don't use him. And you spread with some others who are really kind of maybe under the radar, but maybe project a lot better effort today. So I'm going to take a look at those. Okay, so the first one I want to look at that maybe has that potential is the number two over the cap. If you look at this horse, had an excuse last race. And so you see the green there because excuse horses come back and do run very well, especially if they were better than looked effort and we got a projection of an improve. So what, what happened to this horse in his debut? Uh, off slow and then did a swerve. Uh, you know, almost lost the rider, almost got eliminated way back, had to run hard in the middle part of the race to catch up to the field, then got in traffic on mid-turn and then had a late run and galloped out really well. So this there was a lot going on there. This horse ran well. I like that fact that he gets 40 days just to get freshened up. You know, we talk about form cycle. What's form cycle? Well, if a horse is laid off for 45 days or more. The next start is, is considered his first race in his form cycle. So this horse is still in his second race in his current form cycle. Uh, and I just think they might have, you know, that race could have taken something out of him because, I mean, he just did a lot. When you just look at this run line, you say, well, you know, whatever. But when you really looked at the race, I mean, this horse, in my opinion, uh, ran a big effort. So this is a horse. I like the fact that Ortiz, even though he almost fell off of him, stays aboard. For Rice, who's kind of warming up at the uh, current Belmont meet. So the two over the cap, especially at that price, I, I can't see you getting that big of a, you know, 15 to 1. Now, some people, and this I just want to point this out. Some people say, well, this is 40,000. So he's looking like he's dropping. Uh, I mean, he's going up in class. So his, his debut is at 40. He's going to main special weight. But notice the optics fig range. What's the optics fig range is basically what we project uh, the horses to run based on what they you know, they've been running. So it's relative to the field that they ran against. So if you look at today's, it's 76 to 82. And if you look at the debut, it's the same. So I don't consider this a class or a big class drop, a jump, I mean. So uh, I'm going to be willing to forgive them for that. 
Um, the other ones I want to look at here is the, let me see, I think it's the number five first, Mueller. Uh, thought this horse, you know, was terrible. I mean, he just, other than, you know, got kicked back in his only last dirt race, we projected a drop for this horse because he just wasn't cutting it uh, on the dirt. Lo and behold, they switched this horse to turf and this horse just ran his lights out. Better than looked effort, trouble trip. Um, you know, and, and the only thing we can say is, you know, maybe he found a home on turf and that's where he needs to keep. So is there potential for more upside? There's, I think so. At 78, he's already within range. Uh, and, you know, he's again, he had trouble in that race. Better look effort. Uh, so, yeah, there's potential. He's another horse. He's eight to one on the morning line. He just might be a different horse on turf. And if he is, then uh, he's viable. Um, a little long shot that I thought kind of flew under the radar a little bit was the number nine, Mudville nine. Uh, this horse started his career on dirt, ran two sprints. Second one, I mean, he, he looked like, you know, he ran okay his debut. And then the second one, he got into trouble, uh, major trouble. And we projected an improve out of the race. They switched and go along the turf. And then he got into trouble again, major trouble again. Uh, this horse potentially has got more upside. He still ran a 69 last time. Uh, if you just kind of do the second race improvement on a horse, nine, 18 points, you know, if their intent is right, you know, if it's a horse moving in the right direction, this horse get, is in the range. Uh, then he had major trouble in two races. So I think there's more upside on this horse. Uh, and if we could see it today, he can make him a contender. I'd like to switch back to McCarthy for Trombetta. I think this horse is uh, a viable contender and he's going to definitely be under the radar. He's 21 in the morning line. Uh, there was one more I thought I had a look, and yeah, this is the Mott horse. This is another horse that ran debut on turf at uh, in the spring here, oh, no, in the fall, uh, when they were running at Aqueduct for Belmont Meet. And I thought this horse did a nice little close. It was a sneaky close, the final quarter of a mile. Uh, and then we projected to improve on this horse. And then they, this horse stayed in New York, didn't go to Florida, uh, and then was switched to the dirt, uh, made a wide move in that race, uh, kind of flattened out. Uh, and then back on the dirt again. But this time, this horse was running in open company versus stakes, non-graded stakes. Um, so he kind of was overmatched in that race, I assume. They're going to give him a little freshening, and now he's back in and starting his first race in a form cycle uh, back on the turf. I think this horse has got a chance to move forward. I don't know as much as the others I mentioned in here. But, you know, if he kind of just base it on that first race on turf, um, if he can move forward off of that, then he rates a chance to maybe get into the exotic. So um, that's the number 10. I, I just want to see if there's one more that I wanted to consider. I, yeah. So for me, horses, the eight, I think might be a little bit soft, especially at that price. You know, I, I'd be willing to take a chance against that at that price. I thought the two, who I thought was very interesting. The five, uh, the nine, and the 10 were interesting horses uh, to maybe consider. Probably like the two the most, but again, this is a way of using notes to get to these horses you probably never would have gotten to. And, and don't be afraid to take a chance. I mean, yeah, these some of these long shots are going to lose a, a lot, but they don't need to win that often. If you get, you're playing 10, 15, 20 to one shots, they don't need to win every, you know, three, four, five times, right? They don't need for you to be profitable. So, you know, be willing to kind of step out, take a chance. Uh, you know, you can maybe have one score in a month that could make your year. So just keep that in mind when you're playing. Uh, this game's a grind. You need these these big plays at some point to kind of get you get you home. So just think about that as you go through this. So um, again, this is John Delphi Optics EQ. Check us out on Twitter at Optics EQ and also our website, OpticsEQ.com. Next week is the Belmont. Uh, so we're going to be doing a video analysis preview with uh, our friends at FDN Bets. Check it out. And, you know, thanks for listening to us and supporting us. Um, have a good day.